It's time for Mac Break Weekly, episode 225. Andy Anako's here with Screencasts Online host Don McAllister to talk about the latest Mac news. Yes, we actually have one Mac story. We'll also talk about the iPhone, rumors about the iPad, and a lot more. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 225 for December 14th, 2010. Three white dongles. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Go to Meeting. Reduce costs, improve efficiencies, and help your company's bottom line with Go to Meeting. For your free 30-day trial, visit gotomeeting.com slash macbreak. And by hover.com. Hover is domain name registration and management that's simple. For 10% off your new domain, go to macbreak.hover.com. And by ice.com. Give your special lady something she wants for Christmas this year, a beautiful piece of jewelry. Now through December 22nd, ice.com is giving you $50 to spend and more. Find a special gift for your special someone at ice.com slash twit. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the latest news about the Macintosh and, uh, and, and iOS world. Uh, joining us uh, today, as uh, always, and I want to thank him very much for filling in for me last week, Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times. Hope I returned the car tanked up and without any odd <laughs> smells you couldn't get rid of. I'm just glad I uh, made a map of all the scratches before I left, because I'll tell you... <laughs> also joining us really pleased to have him don McAllister from screencasts online hi there leo good all to the, be back again all the way from liverpool indeed today and uh, andy and uh, alex i'm sorry alex is out today Andy's here Al alex has the uh, day off he's on a plane somewhere as he always is flying somewhere in the world i had a good time at the web that's a fun have you ever gone to that uh, don it's just over the pond. No, no, it should do. And yeah, it's it's not that far, but it always this time of year it's just crazy for me with uh, getting shows out for Christmas and uh, you know things in the new year. So uh, I couldn't really spare the time this time around, but definitely next year I'm going to try and make the effort. Yeah, it's a fun event. It, it really mm -hmm. is. A, it, now it snowed and froze and it was cold, but I had a blast and uh, and I and I really thank Louis Lemur and his wife Geraldine who put the, this conference on for uh, inviting me out. It was a lot of fun. So uh, did anything happen while I was gone? <laughs> any any Mac news at all? Mm -hmm. uh, no, re the biggest thing on my radar was new spate of rumors about the iPad, yeah. uh, <laughs> and mostly the usual new spate of rumors you get before right. Christmas when people are kind of eager to get their mandatory 800 words out so they can go home and be yeah, with their the loved analysts ones. go, oh, flash the new iPad, it'll have a camera. And a better screen. Oh, really? <laughs> Anything <laughs> else, maybe? I mean, it's pretty obvious, but if they're going to do another generation, um, isn't it? I mean, will there be any? Yeah. It's, it, it, look, it's speculation. We don't know what they're going to do. We don't even know. We're just assuming that they're going to do it as a yearly release as they do the iPhone. It could be that uh, they don't. We don't know. Yeah, the, the only thing I've seen in these rumors that is new and interesting is the idea of there being uh, an SD card slot. And I am don't know what to I'm make of skeptical. that. I'm very skeptical of that. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I could, I, could, I could see it going either way. The fact that they put SD card slots on pretty much as stock on every device they can put it on now, nowadays is not a phone is interesting. The fact that they are, the, the fact that they already have a add-on device that's an SD card slot. You, you could, there, you, you can often sort of imagine. Oh, 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 you're saying, well, let me, you mean a reader? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, oh, you don't I, mean I, as additional memory. No, 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 no. You I mean, mean a reader. I, I, mean, I mean, just like just like you can buy for thirty bucks the camera adapter I kit. I got it. I got Ima it. Imagine the exact same thing with the exact same features, only you don't have to spend thirty bucks for it. It's actually a, a reader that's built in. I, I, well, I can see that. You, I see what you're saying. I thought you meant as additional memory, as many phones do. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, the main reason for that as well is that they, uh, the, there were some case shots came out, so we've got uh, shots of uh, new iPad cases with uh, just the right size slot down at the bottom for the SD card. 
But uh, I must admit, um, I think, Andy, you did this as well. I lost my camera connection kit, so I've had to go and buy a second one. So I mm-hmm. just wish they would integrate it in the thing because it's, yeah. it's costing me too much money. It, it's, it's a real kludge, you know, the way you have to... It, and it's easy to lose. It is, and you, and you use it once, you put it away somewhere, then you can't remember where it is. And so, if you have um, the VGA dongle, now you've got three white little dongles <laughs> that you've got to have a case for or something because you're going to lose yeah. them all. Yeah. So I would think, yeah, I would think that's, if it's going to happen, you know, I think that's... What uh, about the, the speculation of the chairman, I think is kind of interesting. Uh, you remember, Steve Jobs said on the famous analyst call, uh, never would we make a seven-inch tablet. Yeah, uh, and and of course, uh, Samsung now says we've sold a million Samsung S tabs in two months, so it's a very successful form factor. Maybe Steve all along was uh, spreading a little, you know, m- disinformation. Well, do you, see, you think there'll be a seven inch? Not. Sorry, Dan. Go ahead. No, well, do, uh, go on, Andy. You go first. You, yeah. I was, I was, yeah, I was Andy, gonna, you I was, speculate. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we, better than. Yeah, we, we talked about this a little bit last week where I was saying I, I had to haul out the quote where Steve during an analyst call in October, he was explicitly saying seven inch tablets are dead in the water, dead in the water, Whoops. will never succeed. Whoops. And yeah, and uh, if they uh, I don't know if, if uh, Apple sold a million iPads in the first three weeks, they just simply waited another week to say, oh, we sold a million in the first month. But that's actually faster. That would be faster than the first iPad sold. Uh, there, are, they have, there are multiple advantages to how Samsung was selling those tablets where you can buy it from any carrier anywhere so i think it's still a, a better achievement for apple but yeah there's there's definitely having now used two android based seven inch tablets that i really liked uh i think there's a definite good reason why apple chose 10 inches because a 10 inch ipad can be so many things that a seven inch tablet cannot but the idea of having this thing in your back pocket in your jacket pocket and not have to carry it around like a like a little like chanel clutch wherever you go that's a pretty good feature what about um, a better screen on this thing? I'd sure like to see a better screen on it. It's a it's a, it's a fairly low resolution. Yeah, but it doesn't appear low resolution, does it? No. I mean, it's a high quality screen. Uh, I mean, I know there's talk of the Retina display for the iPad, but you know, to, I don't think to that's get to doable. Picture, that's, that's just not going to happen. Yeah. No, but but they might be able to increase the resolution a little bit. But I, I think yeah. you know the iPad screen itself is fine. Yeah. But uh, I, I, going back I, to the seven inch thing, though, the, the thing that really makes me think they're not going to do it. I know they've said in the past when they, you know, when we had the original iPod and uh, people were asking for the video iPod, iPod and Steve said, no, people don't want to watch video on a small screen. <laughs> it was like an off-the-cuff thing, but for him to come out in that, um, in that earnings call so deliberately to pan the seven-inch form factor, right. um, that's really going to be difficult for him to sort of reel that back in, I think, and, and, and actually launch a seven-inch device. So I'm a little bit cautious as to whether or not that they might do in the end, but um, so soon after that earnings call, the sort of vitriol that he... He made on the seven inch form factor yeah. take a lot of reeling back in yeah the, the big disconnect for me is just the fact that they can o- they always have a one sentence answer to anybody who will say well why would i want to buy an ipad instead of the ipod touch why would i buy a macbook air instead of regular macbook uh this would be a sort of thing where they'd have to say well here's why you'd want to buy something that's exactly like this other thing only it's slightly smaller mm-hmm. and we've already understood that you yeah. can put this in, the, in a pocket what's the case do- for it yeah yeah. yeah, it's. I, I'm. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I do. Uh, I don't think they're going to play the resolution game because the problem there is that they got to. They have to make sure that they keep 4.99 as the cheapest price of the cheapest iPad. I'm not sure if they could substantially increase the resolution of the display and still keep that price. I don't know. Uh, but I would. I wouldn't be surprised if they simply made sure that it could play 720p video at full resolution. Uh, just, just so they could say, oh, and all these wonderful HD videos you can now rent through the iTunes store are now available. Now you can watch it at full HD resolution on your brand new iPad. Hurrah, hurrah, huzzah, huzzah. Wouldn't there be, uh, if you change the resolution, an issue with uh, for developers that they now have? That's one of the problems people complain about with Android is that you have all these different form factors. Maybe they'd want it. I mean, there's, there's, there's yeah. probably some resistance from developers, too. Yeah, well, the thing at this next release, if and when it does arrive, I mean, they've still got so much that they can add into it without worrying too right. much about the resolution. Because people are happy with the screen. I mean, I'm exceptionally happy with the screen. I think it's really a really nice screen. And uh, I don't see anything particularly wrong with it. And just to bump up the screen just so they can say it isn't really the way right. Apple would. Do it. So, but, you know, they've got the camera, they've got, you know, extra storage, they've, they've got extra things. The SD card even could be quite a big selling point for them when, they, when that comes out. So, but I think the camera is going to sort of launch the next 
generation of people who want to actually buy an iPad. Let's, not, let's go ahead. Still, the, the camera is still an interesting thing to me, though, because uh, one of the one of the two or three different tablets that I'm really following closely is uh, the Atom tablets that's being put together by Notion Inc. And they have a really interesting solution for the camera where it's actually mounted on, if you can imagine, like a flat bead inside the inside the case you can actually rotate it yourself to rotate it to exactly whatever angle you want i'm i don't know what the solution is to the idea of having excuse me the idea of having a device like this where you still have to when you're doing facetime you have to hold it like this to get a good angle right. or if and even the idea of using an external camera as a camera even on the uh, on the galaxy tab it's a little bit freaky to be taking pictures like this it's not unusable by any means but it's the sort of thing that inspires a, a search for a really clever solution yeah well it'd have to be clever i can't imagine uh, steve putting out anything with a thing hanging off of it it just doesn't it doesn't really feel like something a jobs uh, or a johnny ive would do you know it, it's it seems like they're they're going to do something that's a little sleeker uh, that which might be the good argument for the sd card uh, built in the sd yeah. card reader built in mm -hmm. normally you, you hate to give that really stupid explanation that apple hates to cut holes in the sides of their devices right. even though that seems to be pretty true uh but that's I, I would love to see an sd card reader not as not as a external storage thing or as external memory but just simply as pop the card out of this thing put it into this thing boom you're done if no they put a questions. camera in it they almost have to don't they because otherwise how you, uh, it's hard to get the pictures mm -hmm. off Oh no, it's easy to get the picture. Oh, you sync to iPhoto. Just sync it, yeah. I guess yeah. it's the same as an iPhone. All right. They would, they would they would say how easy it is to they, they, how, they would how easy it is to send photos out to your up to your mobile me account, which everybody has and loves. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> I still worry about the overlap, though. There's so many, you know, they've got the iPod Touch now that's got the camera. They've got the iPhone that's got the camera. You know, do they really want to put a camera? I know people are clamoring for it, but, you know, is it Apple's way to uh, to go ahead and give people what they want? Um, you know, no. Most people, <laughs> if you, exactly, yeah. No, they tell you what you want. If you want to take photos, take one of these smaller iOS devices, the right. iPad, your, you know, your media and consumption. Let's, let's not forget how slow the evolution of the iPhone was. I mean, the first iPhone was Edge. Then mm. it had, you know, I mean, it was, it, they, they, they are, I think Apple's, you know, very deliberate in the way they roll out features. I don't think they're going to roll out a bunch of features. Well, the, the, the difference there is that remember that the iPhone existed in a complete vacuum. All they right. had were the iTunes store to support it. Uh, whereas right now, the, the most significant data point for the iPad having a camera is now the, now there's FaceTime. Now they can say, and of course, FaceTime becomes even more relevant and more important because now here's yet another <laughs> iOS device that can you know, follow around your kid in the front yard. Oh, don't you want your grandparents to see your kid? You don't want your grandparents to see your kid? What kind of a <laughs> sick idiot are you? Well, fine. fine. Maybe you should get an Android device if you don't want your grand <laughs> grandparents to your you don't to love see your grandchildren. <laughs> I, you know what? No, no. Don't even come to the Apple store. I don't think we want you holding an Apple device. <laughs> I think FaceTime is the Google wave of Cupertino. I just, I just, uh, I can't, uh, okay. Okay. Did you, uh, uh, what was I going to ask you? Oh, did you see the um, the report? This I found fascinating. That says that Verizon actually, is that Android is not doing as well. You know, Andy Rubin said last week that Android was activating 300,000 devices a week, which sounds, you know, 9 million a month sounds like a, a lot. Uh, but this study that came out, and I'm going to see if I can find the, who, who did the study, that basically Verizon... And, and their sales of Android, of the Droid d platform, was just stopped cold in August once the iPhone 4 came out. And then, in fact, iPhone 4 really is the dominant, still the dominant phone, which yeah. might explain why Verizon is suddenly kind of, you know, selling iPads and maybe a little bit interested in getting to that world. Did you, did you find that credible, that, that, that report? Uh, I saw a couple of different reports like that, one of which that says that uh, uh, activations and sales of Android are flattening in the sense that they're still doing exceptionally well but this was definitely that the reason why it's taken off in 2010 is because this is the first year in which you had a variety of really very credible excellent android devices to actually use last year of course if you wanted an android device the reason why you wanted it was chiefly to do one of these minus several fingers uh, towards Apple, but now it's a very credible alternative to, to the iPhone. The other report that I saw uh, that was uh, linked around a few days ago is simply saying that, Ver that Verizon and other carriers, they almost can't afford to not carry the iPhone now because they can see how much damage the iPhone is doing to uh, by virtue of the fact that no one's coming into the store to get them. So 
Yeah, let me see if I can pull up this uh, this graphic here because this is uh, this is a kind of a uh, it was a I'll be honest with you, it was a bit of a shock to me, and I'm kind of I'm almost wondering is this is this you know is could this possibly uh, be true? Um, it's from a company called Asimco, and this is from MacRumors.com. Asimco uh, did an analysis of Verizon smartphone device sales over the past year, concluding that despite a growing Android platform. And you'll see the 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 the, um, the blue line at the top of this graph. That's the iPhone, and the yellow bar is a Web OS. The green bar is Android and Windows Mobile, and the blue bar is, of course, the uh, the BlackBerry platform. Verizon finds itself in a position in which it may have had little choice but to accept Apple's terms to bring iPhone to the carrier. In other words, as soon as the iPhone came out, boom, it kind of started to clobber Android, and the, the iPhone is absolutely the dominant platform. Despite these three hundred thousand activations a day, or maybe they're, you know, maybe Steve Jobs is right that that number is uh, somehow bogus. Yeah, well, that number actually on the same day that that number came out, I heard somewhere else say uh, two hundred thousand, you know, which per day a hundred thousand a day disparity between the figures is. No, yeah, yeah, Google said no. Nah, I think Google said initially two hundred thousand uh, 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 about uh, two three months ago. Mm. And Andy Rubin this week, I mean, Andy should know he is the Android guy at, at Google, said three hundred thousand. So I think it's it was up from two hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I mean, that's the number that Google. That's the official Google number. But right, now right. I'm sure Steve Jobs as disputes it as he did uh, at uh, his last uh, keynote. But I'm yeah. not. But and and but these and these numbers kind of maybe uh, support it. it. It looks like, despite it's, the huge sales uh, or the purported huge sales of Android, that iPhone is still totally dominant. Yeah, I, I looked at it. I understood some of it, and I try to have someone else explain it to me. I do. I, I do have some contacts who do that sort of thing for a living who uh, don't go from what are the features of this and what do you think is going to be important next year, but they go for the actual numbers they can get their hands right. on. And they say that it seems credible, but they reminded me that every analyst is, right. in the end, he's no different from anybody else right. who's giving an opinion. The difference between an analyst is that they put their reputation, the reputation of their company behind it, and they know how to use charts and graphs. And I don't know Asimco, so I don't know how credible they are. Yeah, I've never, I've never heard of them before. Yeah. The, if, if their data is solid, it, it's an interesting argument. Um, I still think that Apple's going to be in trouble if they don't, if, if, if they don't treat Android seriously, uh, you've got the you've got the, the hot new Android phone. You know how much better it was than the, than everything it's that was available. Better all the time. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it's 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 the the, the graph. They're is iterating starting. much more quickly than Apple is iterating. I mean, I think that's. I think yeah. I think it's it's more like I think Apple got it almost so close to right out the gate, and there was more of like they had to do refinements. Android, they came up with something that was, was usable. Out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, exactly. It was like, it proved that they can ship an OS, and they proved right. they could ship an OS that kind of could be used as a phone to a credible OS, to a good OS, and next year they'll start shipping really, really good OSs. So. Isn't it still fragmented, though, for people who don't know about mobile phones and smartphones? I mean, you know, you know what you're getting with the iPhone. It's, it's a set yeah. feature set, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the same throughout the world. Yeah, there's so many different Android phones and even Android operating systems now that it must be totally confusing to anyone who, uh, who doesn't really follow the market. Um, it, it's, you know, the, the I, thing that, I the think thing it is, is, although I get a lot of people asking about Android phones. I mean, I think that... Uh, well, remember, Verizon spent a ton of money on these droid ads, as god-awful as they are. <laughs> and <laughs> everybody saw them, and I get a lot of people asking. Now, here's, an, here's another uh, a stat from the same Asimco report. In Q3, and that's what's key, in Q3, the iPhone at AT&T outsold Android at Verizon by a factor of 2.5. So if you're just comparing AT&T to Verizon, which is what this report is about, because uh, remember, there's 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 Android phones in all the carriers, including AT and T. So we're we're not saying Android to Apple. We're saying Verizon to AT and T. Two two hundred fifty percent iPhone over Droid. That's significant. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. What interests me though is is that you know, the the brand awareness of people uh, in in the smartphone market. People know what an iPhone is, but there's an iPhone and there's or the smartphones. All this other uh, stuff, you, yeah. Yeah, you ask anybody in the street, you know, what's the alternative to an iPhone? They, they probably even don't even know what Android is. So that you, you've got all these people who, who know about the iPhone and know about the feature set of the iPhone. The, the main barrier that I've found out, I mean, people have asked me, you know, um, uh, people have been looking for cheap deals for iPhones over, over Christmas, and there aren't any. You know, you, you pay a right. premium for an iPhone because that's what you get. Right. And uh, I know quite a few people who've uh, not been able to afford the iPhone, so they've just gone for another phone 
uh, regardless as to what the operating system was on it. It was just, you know, what the cheapest deal was in that partic at the particular time. Oh, look at this now. Somebody's just, but, somebody in the chat room says, the article now is updated. The Asimco article is updated with this quote. Assuming the data is accurate, we're going to dive into it, but I will state up front that without confirmation, the conclusions below should be taken with a grain of salt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, I had, when I read it, alarm bells went off because it just, it's, it's like, what? Um, and so maybe, I don't know. It's more information. The, you know what the, the real truth of it is, though? Palm's dead. <laughs> but I think we knew that. Well, they, are, they already are. <laughs> I think we uh, knew but, that. But, well, well WebOS is still in there with a chance. Uh, this is a this is in in tab in the tablet war at least for 2011. This is a race in which the leading horse is 10 lengths ahead. Oh yeah, and now it's a, now it's a battle to see who wins the second place prize money. Wait. Android hasn't won it yet, but no. HP with a with WebOS could really just that's come in and say we've learned everything right. everything good that Apple has done, everything bad that's that other manufacturers have done with Android tablets, and we're going to enter smart and smarter. And uh, let's let's not forget that uh, that uh, there's also uh, you know. Microsoft is, in, is yeah. saying that they're going to announce it at, at CES. <laughs> okay, I was laughing at it. There was a, well, there, no, there's a great press release saying that we, we intend to announce the abandonment of our CES announcement in April. So <laughs> but, we'll be renting yeah. out the Yerber Winnis Center Gardens to a special where we actually play Will It Blend with whatever oh. it was we showed off on in January. Oh, yeah, Windows 7 tablets. That's exciting. First, anyone in the first three rows, wear a poncho. <laughs> It's a Gallagher moment. It's hey, a, what it's about? Like, it's, it's like it's so hard to take anything that, that that Microsoft does in January at CES seriously. There's so it's it's like it's like fantasy league CEO. You, you figure <laughs> out that which one of these devices am I going to bet are they going to still be making or still be excited about six months from now? Yeah, it's there's so little that you can actually just put put to the bank on there. How about uh, RIM? I think that the uh, playbook. I mean, it's looking better and better. It's uh, still a prototype, I guess. We don't know. Has yeah. anybody handled it? Not me. No. No, there's been some videos. Um, yeah, but, with, she's done hands-on videos in, you know, but no one's actually picked it up and actually started to play with it, I don't think. And it, does, it doesn't excite me. They've yet to, with, when, when you have a company like Notion Inc., they excite me because they say that, they, they, they seem to be saying that we're starting with Android, we're building, we, real, we recognize that their mail app and other apps like that aren't very good, so we're building our own mail app that we think works awesome. We're, we're adding really cool industrial design to make this into a more open, more expandable device. That excites me. HP, with a couple, one of the best consumer electronics manufacturers and designers out there, with WebOS, which is a really promising multi-touch operating I system, agree. That, that it could it could really be an incredible alternative that excites me right now all rim has done is say we have a tablet that looks pretty much exactly like every other seven inch tablet you have ever seen that people are talking that people are trying uh, thinking about building we promise that it has a really awesome web browser that plays flash we don't have much else to say at this time <laughs> so I'm, I'm not discounting them i'm just saying that right. they have to start defining who they are and why yeah. people should start putting up 500 bucks in a drawer and waiting for them to ship. Right. I mean, the problem that they've got, though, I mean, that everything now is, you know, the, the, the benchmark is the iPad. Um, yeah. But it's, it's the iPad of 10 months ago. You know, it's it, all this new stuff that isn't even in the market yet is, is being judged against the current iPad. Right. So they're not hiding to nothing, really, when the new iPad comes out with presumably new features, etc. You know, we're into the old leapfrog game. And again, Apple's always going to be, you know, if they play the card right, always in front of, of leapfrogging what the other competitors are doing. I think I think you got it right, Andy, when you said that the race is for second place. I mean, there's no question. Mm -hmm. It's either for second place or wait to be the person who can take advantage of when the first horse starts to stumble. Right. And I don't see any signs of that happening, no. but we could be in a position where it's 2012 and Apple is only the fourth company to recognize that they need an iPad that is more useful as a replacement for a notebook. Right. Let's take a break. Uh, we're talking to Andy Yanaka from the Chicago Sun-Times. Don McAllister screencasts online. It's Mac Rick Wigley. And there's lots more to talk about. More, more carrier news as well. The phones are still, uh, I think, the most interesting. Phones and mo mobile in general, the most interesting area. I'm looking desperately. To oh, yes, there is one Macintosh story. <laughs> I found a Mac story. And I have a Mac question. Wh wither the app store. But before we do that... I want to welcome a new advertiser to the show. And, uh, gentlemen, you might want to consider this for the lady in your life. I don't. I like jewelry. <laughs> Are you laughing? 
I'm as excited about it. Oh, no, this. it's just the, the way you say it. Yeah, ladies. ladies. I want like you to your go. Nickname, you're like your nickname in school might have been Captain Smooth. It was. How do you know? Captain Smooth here telling you that when the holiday season's upon us, there's nothing the little woman likes more than some ice. That's why. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's also nothing they like more than being called the little the woman. The little woman. <laughs> sorry, hey. oh, shut up. <laughs> I put, I, I, I'm clicking the mute button because I'm... <laughs> Women, they get tired wearing the same old dress. But when they get tired, you got to try a little tender ice. Actually, I, I think, uh, I'll be honest with you. Here's why I buy my, my, my uh, wife jewelry. Because I can never find anything that fits. I have no idea what she wants. But I know if I get her some beautiful jewelry, she's always going to be happy. And right now, ice is... Dot com is giving you $50 to spend and more when you visit ice.com slash twit. Look, there's Christmas gifts, there's wedding, designer jewelry, even clearance jewelry, all at amazing prices because ice.com is only online. No brick and mortar. This is a, you know, this is kind of a, a new idea. Selling jewelry online at amazing prices. Now, this is not some fly-by-night Jeweler either. Ice.com has been around since 1999, a well-trusted jewelry store. And with the free gift box and the $50 to spend, here, here comes Lisa. She want, Which one do you want? You want that diamond bracelet? 33 carat, sky blue, topaz, sterling silver bracelet, just $150. No, I want to... And, and with $50 off, it's even more affordable. Engagement rings. There's $15,000 in daily prizes. I, you know, I do all my shots. Here, here's tennis braces. I know you like those, Lisa. Let's take a look at some of the tennis braces. The, uh, the deal is you get your shopping done now, and it's shipped in time for Christmas. You but you do have to select two-day shipping just to be sure you have. If you want your order shipped standard mail, they'll ship it free for orders placed before 1 p.m. Eastern, December 22nd. But to guarantee delivery by Christmas, you might want to take that two-day shipping. And Ice.com will give you $50 to spend plus a free gift box now through December 22nd. Don't wait, guys. Don't be like me, one of those Christmas Eve shoppers. Mm -mm -mm. Ice.com slash twit. Take advantage of that. $50 off. Come on, look at these. Look at these prices. Okay, I'm going to do a little shopping here. Don't, don't mind me. I'm going <laughs> to... You go on with the show here. I'm getting my Christmas shopping. <laughs> Ice.com right, right. slash twit. I don't think I don't think there's any series of holiday commercials that lie harder than the ones for like mall jewelry stores. Oh God, don't <laughs> yeah, whatever you do. It's like, oh honey, you went to the mall that's about one mile away and you <laughs> bought the biggest, tackiest, gaudiest thing in the window. <laughs> Isn't that nice? True love. No, this is nice stuff, actually. I'm 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 looking at it and it's beautiful. And you can get your shopping done without even going out the door. Don't tell her that. Guaranteed. Christmas delivery, if you hurry, take advantage of that uh, December 22nd deadline to get $50 off at ice.com slash twit. Looks like they have Canadian, uh, looks like Canada too. So, yes, Canadian shipping expedited. Can Canada post expedited parcel. Yeah. Ice.com slash twit. Now, moving on, my friends. <laughs> Andy, you were very good. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's, that's why Skype has a. Do you too. ever buy jewelry, Andy? Ever on any occasion at all? Uh, I'm very, 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 very weak about like buying jewelry for for women. It's <laughs> it's although it's 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 I would be very very cheered to have one site that has so many things that I feel as though whatever I want, it's right here. <laughs> and Jane was that, was Seymour has endorsed none of this. Is that weak that you can't resist it, or weak that you're not very good at it? No, he's weak. No, no. He's not no, good no, at it. But Don, 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 is, Don and I are old married men, and we know the secret. We really do. That's I'm telling you, I stopped buying clothes. I definitely don't buy household items anymore ever since I bought that vacuum and got hit over the head with it. It, you, it Jewelry. Oh, oh. Oh, bad, right, Don? You know. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Jewelry. That's why I'm wearing the leather jacket. <laughs> it looks good with the bling. Uh, let us uh, move on to uh, more stories. Apple's iPad. Time Magazine. Did you do this last week? Named it. First of all, Oprah says it's her favorite thing in the world. And now Time Magazine says it's uh, number one on its top gadgets of 2010. Well, of course it is. What, I mean, how could there even be? What would be second? What would be? What would beat it? 
I've, I've, I'm actually uh, either this week or next week. We're starting in the Sun, the Sun Times. I'm doing the countdown of the three, two, one of the the Time Magazine style, like most interesting tech items or companies of 2010. Uh, and I, I call it the Time Magazine most interesting because that means that it can be Hitler. We don't necessarily the best. I'm just saying that more interesting in terms of most influential. The iPad is actually number two. It's something else is number one. Really? Shocker. Mm. You know, Time Magazine made that mistake last year. They made the droid <laughs> number one. They're backing down now. For 2010, number one, iPad. Oh, it's one of those where you get a slideshow, so they get more yeah. ad impressions. Oh, that's nice. Let's see. What do you guess? Number two? It's got to be the iPhone, right? Let's see. And the winner is... Samsung Galaxy S. There's an Android lover somewhere in there. <laughs> Apple did have four out of the top five, so we know that the rest of these. MacBook Air, I have to agree with that. That's really done well, hasn't it, and on its oh, launch. They, oh, I uh, love it. Is it amazing. selling well? Do we have sales figures yet? I don't believe so. I don't think they've come from Apple as of yet, but um, anecdotal evidence, I mean... <laughs> who, 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 doesn't, who doesn't <laughs> love it? You know, I, I just a p point of interest... I uh, dropped my MacBook Air when I was in Paris. It fell off the night table. It's, it's all I brought to Paris, by the way. It's perfect. And it does dent, just so you know. It will. It will dent. Uh, there's a ding in the, in the, in the unibody as well as on the uh, lid. No, no other you know, damage. It's working fine. In fact, I kind of like it. It's a little, little scar. Yeah. And then there's somehow, I don't know, there's a little gouge uh, there as well. So... It's starting to look like a used computer, but boy, it is used. This is it. This is my go-to device. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. Like every every December, I do my 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 musical advent calendar, most partly so I can like talk about music for an entire month, but also partly because maybe they'll click through my Amazon Associates link, <laughs> and, I'll, I, and and for the month. Of, and the, the the thing is, that I'll spend it on something I don't necessarily need but really want. Right. And now I'm like. I hope I get a thousand dollars in gift credit because <laughs> I, I really, I sending, se, sending that MacBook Air back to Apple after the loan period was over. That was the biggest oh, mistake of my life because yeah. I bet they would have like you know just not sure. reminded me for m another month and then not like got the lawyers involved for another three months. <laughs> I'd have a MacBook. Air. It's like an eviction. You know, you've got really you've got a year once the process begins. Exactly. You could keep that thing for a long time. Like, yeah. Apple, you can either spend a thousand dollars on lawyers, or you can just re write this off <laughs> as a loss. Leave it with me. It's up to you. I might, you know, I might almost put that number two. I would definitely put the iPad number one. I'd put the iPad number one, the iPhone probably number two, and the Air number three. I'm not sure I'd put the Galaxy S in that top five. Let's see what else. Oh, come on, Time really? Magazine. Are you drunk? The Google That's TV awful. Logitech review number four. Did you try it? Hmm. That's that's Did problematic. You, that's really problematic. That's yeah, a, that just, thing's a piece of crap. I'm sorry. Uh, Am I speaking too call, too bluntly? I wouldn't call it a piece <laughs> of crap, but for, it's not a not an interesting 399 device. I would agree with the Nexus One. Yes, on that list somewhere. It's 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 number five, and it, it would yeah. it, it's my top. I wouldn't have put think, the Samsung I, I, Galaxy. I, I, I think S you. In there. I, I think know. you. I think you definitely have to put a, a, an Android phone on there. Nexus One, I think, would be one of the best ones to come up with no, if yes, you don't easily. have the Nexus S available to you when you're writing the list. Which you don't. I because, mean, this, this came yeah. out too late in the year to really be the top yeah. in the top five. Now, the iPhone only comes in at number six, and I guess you'd maybe grade it down because of the uh, antenna issues, perhaps. Uh, I think you well, grade it down because of AT and T. If you put this on Verizon, this might be number one, right? Not number one. No, I mean it's it's mm -hmm. a new iteration of an old thing. And it's not quite as exciting. Apple TV should have been above it because it's more it's more of a reinvention uh, and I more agree. of a reinvention than an update to something that we've already seen. Number seven, also, Apple TV. It's one yeah. third the price of the Logitech Review. It should have been way up above the Logitech Review. I can't even believe. Yeah, they, yeah. they I think that's still a sleeper product as well. The Apple TV. I don't think we've seen anything of its full potential as of yet. It's yeah. uh, there's there's some more stuff coming down the track for that definitely. I think there's a little Android bias in that in that uh, list. And I say that as an Android fanboy. I'm I'm Android. I love this. You know, I'm, I'm a big Android user. But uh, I left. I I brought because my uh, my Droid X is Verizon. So when I went to Paris, I used the iPhone four. What I I had fun because it's such a great camera in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's and I used uh, you know uh, Foursquare a lot. And you know, it's it's a nice phone. It's a great phone. I didn't make any calls, so I don't know how the calls were. Uh, and then I left it at the hotel. So. <laughs> Did you you're, like, you're, like, off first? you're like Johnny Techie Seed. 
You yes. just <laughs> there, there'll be whole groves of iPhones and Kindles all across Europe and Canada because a plucky man with a soup can on his head <laughs> strewing <laughs> passed through technology. 50 years ago. <laughs> You know, uh, I don't know. Do you have, I have this habit when I leave the house, I pat, you know, pat the left hip, that's the wallet, right hip's the keys, and then I always pat my breast pocket, that's the phone. And I don't know why I didn't, but when I, and I'm halfway to the airport in the cab, and I, I don't even have to think, oh, did I put it in the bag, did I do it? No, it's, I knew I left it at the uh, hotel, was, yeah. but, you know. No, I, I'm, I, I am the guy who will take three steps away from the, the restaurant table, then take three steps back, stare intensely at the entire table and the chair, yeah. because it's it's a man's got to know his limitations. <laughs> like, am I stupid enough to have not noticed that my iPhone slipped out of my pocket and is now in the, that crack between the, 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 the seat bottom and the back? Yes, Andy, you are exactly that <laughs> stupid. Why don't we just take a look back just to make sure that didn't happen? They're mailing it to me, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Oh, and uh, I'm, pres you know, I'm presuming, <laughs> you know, there, there's an attitude in France. I love, I love France. I'm not knocking France. I love France. I love the food. I love the people. They're, they're, everybody in Paris was very friendly. Maybe because there's such pervasive socialism there, there's not what I would call a strong work ethic. Am I wrong? Let's put it this way. Yeah. It's, it started to snow, and the cabbies get in their cab turn up the heater, fold their arms and start smoking, and you can't get a cab. <laughs> what? I'm not going anywhere. It's snowing. But it's but it's snowing. I need to... No, I'm sorry. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm smoking. <laughs> so I'm hoping that the postal service in France... Because <laughs> otherwise, I'm not going to get the phone till January, till July. I mean, it's going to be... Well, I've never been to France, so it would be unfair for me to comment. So if I love, any of you and, 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 tech organizations in France would like me to fly me out there to give a talk or you should go mop to the web up next a little year. bit yeah, you so that I can defend your fine country against this slander that's I being happening. I love France. I go to, I've been to France uh, like every other year for the last five years. I love France, but there's some things. They just, you know, there's, it's, they well, have... They're, they're, they're my next-door neighbor, so I best not say too much. Yeah, they could actually come your way. They have before. <laughs> no, wouldn't, I wouldn't be the French first day. time. Actually, they, well, they have very yeah, together. relaxed or um, very favourable um, sort of working legislation. So it's very That's much slanted in favour of the uh, yeah. of the workers. It's a you know, workers' whole... paradise. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Lots oh. of ho holidays are great. You know, the con terms and conditions are normally fantastic yeah. for for jobs in France. Yeah. Uh, anybody played Infinity Blade yet? Yes. Oh, I run it up for a bit. Yeah. What do mm -hmm. you think? So they've sold uh, one point six million dollars worth in only five days. That seems pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not a big gamer, but I did pull it up, had a go, and uh, got through to the first level. And yeah, it's very, very impressed. Graphics well, are fantastic, especially I, on the iPad. I don't know why a game would want to send me push notifications, but uh, I'm going to leave that off. This is Unreal Technology. Yeah. Is this the thing that we saw the demo of that you were? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm, I'm wondering how much of it is uh, is actual interest in the game or support for the idea of someone developing a game specifically for iOS and nothing else. Right. Or just the idea of, gee, I've, I've never bought a really good action game, but I've never bought an action game before that everyone is saying this is going to be really awesome. Maybe I should try it. That's, that's how I bought it. Right. Because mm -hmm. I don't usually go for those kind of games. No, me neither. I thought, yeah. Well, what you, I haven't played it yet. I'm just starting it right now for the first time. It's real. It's really cool because it's a. It's a slightly. It takes something slightly complicated, like you know your basic Conan style, you know fantasy sword play, uh, and it doesn't reduce it to that stupid sort of. Uh, uh, well, oh well, you, to duck and roll to the left while raising your, you have to hit, hold down this, this, and this. Tap right. the space bar twice and then move the mouse to the left. It's actually a very interesting control system that make that's easy to work. Uh, mm -hmm. It takes you through easily beat upable opponents for the first oh, two that's three. Good battles and say oh by the way uh, if you want to move to the left <laughs> it will actually freeze the frame and say now to raise your your shield you might want to do this stroke up like this and then it's, i'm getting i'm getting trained here yeah. swipe to strike that's the key in all of this uh uh ios stuff is controls because yeah. you don't have you know if if the controls are good the game is good and if the game is well suited to the controls that's why frankly i think angry birds is so popular because you're just going boom yeah. boom
And that's and that surprised me a little bit because I always thought that the the strength of of iOS was going to be that you can essentially build whatever gamepad you need it to be right. and just simply hold under your thumbs. But no, if you're clever enough and as a designer, you can do a sword game in which you're just sort of like tracing with your thumb the path across this person's entrails you would like your sword to make. Right, right. Which is very satisfying. <laughs> it's nice. The swipe is very reminiscent of Fruit Ninja. So instead of swiping through fruit, just swiping through monsters. And things, so, it's, yeah. so really, but Fruit Ninja was pre fruit. preparation for this. Fruit, yeah. fruit doesn't lift, reach into its pocket, give, give you a portrait of, of his baby child. Say, Please tell them the last thing I said was I love them. You don't get that from fruit. You do get it from human. I mean, there's a, a very interesting one coming out in a couple of days. I think it comes out. Uh, in fact, it might actually be tomorrow or the day after. That's uh, World of Goo. Oh, I is, love World of yeah, Goo. That's a great game. game. Well, yeah. they're, they're now bringing it out on the iPad, and it's multi-touch, but not just like one or two fingers. You can actually use you know four or five different fingers to pull all the different goo balls out and, and arrange them on the screen. And uh, that's that's due out, I think, uh, tomorrow or the day after. Anything with goo balls big. is is big with me. Mm -hmm. And we have a show title. <laughs> okay, so I click Start Bloodline. I'm actually finally getting to the game after uh, some some tutorial. But it looks like there's only two moves. You, there's a block and a swipe, right? There's you, block swipe. There's uh, moving your body. I've only gotten through the first. I haven't. I haven't seen any new explanations of moves yet. Which right. Might might be why I tend to die later on. But. <laughs> I tell the you, the graphics are spectacular, and that's yeah. really that's why this game sold is it's using the Unreal Engine, and uh, Epic's really done a good job. Exclamation mark! Horned Guardian. I guess I have to uh, beat the Horned Guardian. Yeah, this will be this will be fun. Okay, just let's swipe him. Oh, 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 oh! How do I block? How do I block? I hold that, tap uh, to dodge, tap to I dodge. I think it's still it's still training you a little bit. I think. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Enemy attacks will come from many directions. Ooh, good job. Swipe to strike. Boom, 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 boom. Whoa, dodge. I believe you. I believe you swipe upward to raise the shield. I think. Ah, okay. Oh, there. This is the block. Boom. Woo! <laughs> nice slow mo action there. I like it. Yeah, he swipes right over my head. I'm sorry. This is people listening are going, What is going what? on? <laughs> oh, this Perry is a great, This is a great show, for, the great, great game for radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, you know what? I, I could see this is worth $5.99. Absolutely worth $5.99. Yeah. You can see why they've sold. Uh, so much, uh, so many copies. See, I, I wonder. I wonder if this was like really part of Apple's plan all along with the pricing, because I don't get into gaming because there's no way you can get me to spend sixty dollars on a game. Uh, you can barely get me to spend twenty five dollars for a movie. Right. Uh, but right. for six bucks. Sake, for, for six bucks, yeah. I'll definitely take a risk on it. Yeah, this is great. Mm -hmm. This is great. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, in fact, I don't think I've bought as many games. I've never ever bought as many games for either my oh, Mac yeah. or PC than I've bought for the uh, for the iPhone and the iPad. It's just, uh, and, and again, not that I'm a big gamer, and not that I'll, I play them a lot, but they're just nice to have and they're nice to appreciate. Um, things like Cut the Rope is fantastic. Well, that was fun. You're there right. You it's nice when they're very easy at the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like games where it's really easy. <laughs> I'll spend six bucks if it's a game that I can't lose. But I'm glad that it's so successful because it's really dry. I mean, one, I'm sure this made back its money in the first day, 1.6 million, uh, or in the first five days. That's, uh, that's pretty exciting. Um, 274,000 players have currently registered the game. I guess that's where they get the $1.6 million. Uh, that, now, is it on the iPhone? What is it like on the iPhone? Is it... Uh, um, I actually prefer it on the iPhone because you can do sort of just a simple two-thumb sort of action. Okay. Okay. Uh, than that, I've, I've I've played it briefly. Actually, this is the wrong one. This is the this is the Star Wars uh, <laughs> Star Wars Millennium Millennium Falcon uh, Falcon Gunner game. That I was gonna say that this is another example of the sort of game where I wouldn't spend forty dollars for it. But yeah, this is why I don't get much book reading done while I'm waiting for a bus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, die, best die, Empire <laughs> bastards. Well, if you look at the list of uh, uh, iPad apps and and the top grossing apps. It's pretty much, it's pretty much you know all the games. Angry Birds, Plants vs Zombies, uh, the top ten paid apps. Angry Birds Doodle Jump, which my kid loves. <laughs> yeah. Ski Ball. <laughs> oh, I got I, I got to share. I was on a, I was on a train to, to to Boston yesterday, 
uh, or rather Sunday, and I saw the most adorable thing in the entire world. There was this, a dad with his like three-year-old daughter like on his lap. She's dressed up. It was Aww. rainy, so she was dressed in this colorful like little Aww. rain outfit that made her look like a Christmas gift that had just been wrapped. Aww. She's sitting in his lap. He's holding like uh, his iPhone, like playing a game, and she's just like tapping and and tapping and like playing and like oh look uh, look Aww. the bunny just hopped oh look oh why, why don't you tap the t you know t tap the tap the tree maybe like, oh there's a squirrel in the tree let's get the squirrel I'm like oh this is like it this is like it uh -oh. oh. <laughs> I'm so proud to be an apple owner right now it makes no sense but I am well you know I think that I have to say I think you know Steve's uh, attitude is informed a little bit by being a father I mean when he when he was talking about porn. Uh, you know, he said, if you want porn, go to Android. I, and he said, if you have, well, as soon as you have kids, you're going to start caring about this stuff. I think very much he's aware of the, of the, the, uh, uh, you know, the ki the kids. He does it for the kids. He's, he's absolutely all about the kids. Yeah. So, uh, let's like, see, doodle like, jump, ski ball, bejeweled, uh, two plus blitz. Bejeweled blitz is fun, but you have to, you have to have a Facebook account to make that, I think, to make that worthwhile. You heard, you heard about the, uh, the, the Smurfberry game. Yeah. <laughs> the kid who spent three grand on Smurfberries. The mother yeah, who, that's that's that, that, that's bad PR. Yeah, the mother said, <laughs> "I had no idea <laughs> it was possible," but this isn't the first time I uh, I've heard other people who's, who uh, uh, kids spent uh, Paul Thorat's kids spent a ton of money on on uh, fish for the mm. aquarium. These so are in, through in app purchases. Yeah, yeah, in app purchases are, de are can be the you know deadly for this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I wondered when they talk about top grossing, do they include? In-app purchases as well. I bet they don't because, well, of course they would know that. Apple still gets 30%, I believe. Fruit Ninja, number five. Cut the Rope, number six. All-in-one game box, number seven. The Moron Test, number eight. <laughs> would you pay $10 for a game that's been rated one that's star? <laughs> that's the test. And apparently, a lot of are people you, failed. Are you smart enough to put it on a game that depends on people being idiots? I pass. You fail. Thank you very much. I win the moron test. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies and Pocket God. I, I confess I have about seven out of the top ten. Top ten free apps. Facebook, Angry Birds, Light Words with Friends Free. Skype, Tap Tap Revenge. The Weather Channel, Paper Toss, Bing. Bing? <laughs> I was putting Bing on their iPhone. They got all the Microsoft employees. Okay, there's a bonus. If you, put, <laughs> if you all download Bing. Rock Band Free and Talking Tomcat. The most annoying game. And yeah, I know that because uh, Alex Lindsay does it all. In fact, I think it was his pick a couple of weeks ago. Um, top 10 grossing apps. Paid. What is the difference between top 10 paid apps and top 10 grossing apps? I think that that I think that includes free apps that have in-store uh, in-app purchases. I think MLB at bat that was uh, expensive. That's probably one of the reasons it's the top grossing. Angry Birds, Call of Duty, Zombies, Bejeweled Blitz. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's going to be the it's going to be the amount yeah, of I'm, revenue I'm sorry. generated. I'm sorry. The base, okay, not so so top no, paid me, apps me. is number of sales, and top, and top grossing, grossing is amount of money right. made. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Zombie <laughs> Farm. That's a good game. Zombie Farm. Good. Don't keep three pieces of research running at the same time, Andy, because they'll start to bleed into each other. It's like, this has nothing to do with that thing you were looking into three days ago. Listen and then answer. The iPhone 4 is out. No. Uh, friendly, which is a great, that's an, oh, this is, oh, no, I'm looking at iPad only. Okay, so those, those were iPhone and iPod Touch. Now, top 10 paid apps for the iPad, Pages, Good Reader. It's interesting. I am the one who said that the iPad is not a productivity tool. And yet, what are the top apps, paid apps? They're all productivity. Number three, Numbers. Finally, number four, Angry Birds. Then Keynote, Glee Karaoke, Wolfram Alpha, Pinball HD, Friendly, and Starwalk. So uh, for the iPad, it could, you know, a very big difference. A lot of productivity stuff in there. Be interesting to know who's actually using those applications, though. You know, pages and, and yeah, we all bought them. Do we use them? Yeah, yeah, you know, the, the sort of things that you you buy to see what they look like on the iPad. Uh, I mean, I know I, I haven't done a tutorial on the iPad versions of those applications yet, but uh, it's something I need to address really because I think, in some respects, I know it sounds a bit weird, but I, I find them quite hard to use because yeah. it's a completely different paradigm of you know using your fingers. It's um, um, I, I need really to apply myself to to understand how they work properly and. And I think that's a barrier to a lot of people. I would actually... Go ahead. 
I, I had a, I had a really weird, interesting reaction to Keynote. I, I I'm at the point now where I will design. Uh, I, I prefer to actually design it in the iPad version of Keynote than the desktop version. Because okay. you you feel like you can just reach out onto your slide and put things exactly where you want them mm -hmm, to go, as mm -hmm. opposed to simply saying, "Okay, I, well, that, okay, that's close enough. That's kind of where I want it to go." Uh, if there were an easy way to put custom fonts on it, then I would always use it uh, as uh, to put presentations together. I, I'm still kind of addicted to my comic uh, uh, comic book fonts, but it's 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 a big win. So according to Rovio, by the way, the and I was curious about this because, you know, they charge for Angry Birds on the iPhone and they give it away on Android. 12 million iPhones, 18 million Android uh, for a total of 30 million uh, units. Wow. Um, the Android version has been downloaded 5 million. I don't understand why they're saying, oh, I guess the number of down. I'm confused. 30 million downloads, 12 million of them paid, which means they're the iPhone or iPad. Um, but the company says it makes more money in advertising. The ad-supported one makes more money than, this, than the, the ones that they sell. Because they don't sell it for much. It's like a buck ninety-nine, right? Mm -hmm. I was yeah, curious which would be the better model. And obviously they wanted to do an experiment. So they said, well, let's do ad-supported on Android and yeah. paid on iPhone. Well, there was a I, – I, I'm trying to remember where – it might have been uh, – Gruber, who linked this a few days ago, uh, but a developer of uh, of like a battleship type game decided to write a really long report about uh, the switch between making switching it from a paid app to a free app with in-game ads, uh, and how the difference was just like it was like flipping on the money switch as soon as you switched it to a free app that just simply makes its money in other ways. Um, the other interesting part of that was talking about how even though this game is now taking a couple of grand, three grand a month. It was essentially at three, at two or three grand a month. It was essentially supporting itself as opposed to being a good profitable game for the company. Ah, interesting. Well, I'm going to talk about in just a second about a new way of making money on your in, on your game. A, a Angry Birds is actually doing something really kind of surprising. I don't know if they'll be able to do it in the U S but they're, they are going to do it in Finland. We'll tell them about, tell you about that in just a second. But first I Finns do, have all the good things. They get all the, they get all the, this is why we can't have nice things. I want to talk a little bit about our friends at Citrix, the folks who do the great go-to meeting. We use it all the time for our meetings. Um, we have several accounts because sometimes we'll actually have multiple meetings going on at once. Go-to meeting. You want to try it? You can try it free for 30 days. Go to meeting.com slash MacBreak. Yes, it's cross-platform. It even has a great iPad, a free iPad app that allows you to attend meetings. You have to have a Mac or a PC to start meetings. You'll cut costs by reducing travel. You'll improve your conference calls, your communications with the people you work with. You will work smarter. You will be more efficient. And frankly, people will, will stop fighting you <laughs> over having conference calls with you because they're more interesting. What happens is you start a GoToMeeting. You could either send them an email with a link or you could just, while you're on the phone, say, hey, let's everybody go to GoToMeeting. I want you to see this. Uh, they click a link, enter a number, the uh, meeting ID, and uh, 30 seconds later, they're seeing your desktop on their computer. You can, they can take over, control, you know, you can give them control. You can see their desktop. You can let them control your computer remotely. So it's great for training. Like if you have an application, you say, okay, this is how you do it. Now you try it. They can try it on your system. Of course, for sales presentations, it's fantastic. And I, I think it's useful because you don't have to make your clients jump through hoops. They don't have to have the program installed ahead of time. That It's just very quick and easy. Great for collaborating. I want you to try it free for 30 days. Visit gotomeeting.com slash MacBreak. Easy to install, easy to use, very affordable, and free for the first 30 days. Gotomeeting.com slash MacBreak. We thank Citrix for their support of GoToMeeting. I mean, of, uh, of MacBreak Weekly with GoToMeeting, if you know what I mean. I certainly don't. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Having sold millions of copies of... <laughs> now, this is good. This is good writing from... Leander, uh, actually, Sean Brownlee, writing for Cult of Mac, Leander's uh, website. Having sold millions of copies of their Fowls versus Sows catapult game. Okay. Course, angry Birds, of course. <laughs> Rovio is experiencing such success, they're even starting to begrudge Apple their 30% off the top of in-app purchases. This is a big issue, right? Is because Apple takes 30% of everything. In fact, I think it's the reason Apple, and they're getting, Apple's getting a little heat, Apple won't do charitable, uh, won't allow charities in their applications to do donations. And I really believe that the reason is Apple doesn't want to waive the 30%, and they very, they can't really say, oh, we'll take 30% of your charitable contribution. So they're just saying, let's avoid the issue and not allow it. 
Does that make sense? I think that's why. Well, what do you what do you do when a company like uh, let's say let's say NPR or some nonprofit corporation wants to sell a useful app uh, that supports their that that, that supports uh, what they do and, and their mission, and really it is technically revenue for the company. It's not as though they're saying if you you touch this button and donate five dollars, uh, we will give four dollars and ninety eight cents to somebody who desperately needs food and shelter. Right. It's more like you're su you're supporting this company that does good things, but it's not like you're, you're going to be doing something tax deductible with this donation. I think I, I don't think it's I don't think it's more about Apple not wanting to share the revenue so much as they're saying. Right over there, it's 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 like the old saying about if you want if, uh, if there's a way you can safely pick up a porcupine, but you have to really <laughs> want to pick it up. And I think I think that's what we're talking about, that's where it's like it. there's a, there's a way for them to make people able to donate to charities through an iPhone app, but Apple has to really want to make that happen in right. order to get everything in place to make sure it doesn't bite them in the butt. I wish they would do it though. I mean, think about. I mean, it, it makes it so easy to donate. Just think about how uh, beneficial it would be to these these nonprofits if you could say have an American Red Cross app and uh, and donate through it. it. Would be fantastic. I wish they would do it. Anyway, Rovio uh, says we've got a way to bypass Apple's thirty percent. They they're going to launch something called Bad Piggy Bank, <laughs> an in game payment system, which will allow Angry Bird. There's a there's a picture of Bad Piggy Bank. Which will allow Angry Birds uh, players. I don't know what you'd buy. I, I but he, <laughs> you know, some games they go. This is so hard. If you want a solution, you can just buy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, or here's a bomb. You can just destroy. It. That's what you could sell. Like, here's an atom bomb that you could destroy the pigs in this level with one stroke. I'd pay ninety nine cents on some levels just to kill those gall darn pigs. <laughs> Bad Piggy well, Bank uh, in-app purchase system will not use credit cards. It will use the phone uh, billing to pay for it. Some Android apps do that. Hmm. Uh, and that's quite clever, isn't it? Because that's sort of taken Apple's model. Yeah. Whereas, you know, it's so easy to buy stuff on the the iTunes store because they have your credit card details. Right. So it's, you know, it just disappears. You that's, know, how, you know. that's how Windows yeah. Phone works, in fact. Windows Phone, any purchase I do on the Windows Phone goes to AT&T mm -hmm. or goes through AT&T. Well, I'm absolutely positive this is going to work because Apple loves being bypassed. <laughs> They're like, oh, we can't do anything about this. I guess you win this okay. one. Okay. Okay. Um, it says, How's that copy of Camera Plus working for you? Yeah. <laughs> it says Bad Piggy Bank will first launch in Finland based on Elisa, the country's biggest telecom provider. Any in-app purchase will be added to their monthly bill or even purchases of other games with other countries and telecoms to follow. I can bet you, you're absolutely right. There's one country it will not be uh, available in, and that's the U.S. of A. I believe Don has frozen. His video is freezing. Oh, I thought oh. he was just stunned. Oh, my eyes are closed as well. He's, med he's meditating. <laughs> oh, he's, no, he's like Dr. Strange. He's astral projecting oh. his opinion. <laughs> You can still hear me. We hear you fine, and you know, frankly, I, I, I don't. I hesitate to do anything about this because uh, you'll you'll get cut off in a bit. Uh, okay, so, well, I can uh, switch my video off and switch it back on again. Yeah, see try that. Works. See if that works. Um, Rovio intends to bring the bad piggy bank to other games, and will even be offering better rates than Apple's traditional seventy thirty split. Yeah, there's no way that's going to happen in the U.S. I guess they could do it in other. Yeah, yeah, he's moving. He's moving. Look at that. Hey. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Amazing moving Don. <laughs> Al Jolson, he sings, he dances. <laughs> he can move. Uh, I don't even know. I guess they can get away with this because Apple has a looser, uh, uh, less control in the other countries. I don't know how they get away with it. Did you see Waz's white iPhone? <laughs> yes. He's such a wag. <laughs> He's such a wag. He flashed it on CNN the other day. He's just, that's just was for you. He he actually has uh, some plates that he glued onto his regular he black that, iPhone. Yeah. That, remember that uh, guy overseas who got a hold of like some of the production run and was just selling the plates to do your own aftermarket right. upgrade? Right. Actually, Apple shut him down. After Waz got how, his. How spe if, if any of you listening, if you actually own like a white iPhone, how special do you feel right now that you actually have a real one and Waz had a sort of... Even Waz. <laughs> get one on the schneid. <laughs> Even Waz doesn't have one. 
You're better than was, except better for than the was. standing in the industry and the money. And yeah, the well, all that, yeah. But other than that. <laughs> but still, other than that, you have a phone that he doesn't have. No one can take that away from you, except for Apple. When they find out you have it, you shouldn't, and they can take it away from you, but you will have had it for a in the tournament amount of time. Actually, Waz is better than all of us in almost every way, so I probably shouldn't. We'll hold that one for editing. That's, <laughs> Go ahead. Just keep digging. <laughs> Radio Shack had a promotion, which is over now, uh, selling the iPhone for 50 bucks. Wow. Uh, even before this, the promotion uh, uh, expired, they were completely sold out of their entire stock. Uh, Apple Insider said they contacted uh, Radio Shack stores on Friday, and all but one in Tennessee said... Completely sold out of the iPhone 4. And, uh, you know, it just, I mean, no surprise. It just shows you that demand continues high for this phone. Yeah, we don't see any of that over here in the UK. It's um, there's still, you know, everywhere it's still at a premium price. So we don't really see any, any special offers anywhere like that. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, I bet you Radio Shack's eating it, right? Because I don't think Apple's uh, officially discounting it in any way. I think Radio Shack's just eating the 150 bucks. I, 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 that's that's my guess too. Yeah, there's my phone. I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually pulling up to see if there's a. Yeah, here we go. Both. I'm sorry. It's not it's not fifty dollars. It's actually just fifty dollars off. Oh, I'm sorry. But, You're right. It's the not, iPhone, yeah, uh, iPhone yeah. four and the three GS. But even so, a fifty dollar discount is significant. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm looking at the the press release that uh, Radio Shack sent me uh, last week about it. Right. It's it's expired. Uh, also, not not only that, but 3G and 3GS handset, a trade-in credit of 75 and $125, depending on the model. They've done that before, so, and that's a really yeah. good way to buy an iPhone is if you can get that trade-in. Right. So you really, that that, that that would have been, yeah, here we go. iPhone 4, uh, 16 gigabytes, the cheapest you could have bought it for under this deal was twenty four ninety nine. Holy cow. <laughs> a fairly okay deal. Holy cow. If you trade it, you'd have to trade in an old uh, 3GS, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. That's for the 16 gig model with a trade in of a 3GS. That's and if you have your battery your battery club card, battery of the month club card. <laughs> <laughs> Back for in the free nine volt okay, battery. Show of hands, up. how many people have a Radio Shack? But yeah, I thought so, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's defunct now, but yeah, yeah the kid who yeah. I, always could. Hi, can I have my free diesel I, battery? I want a battery, please. I'm making a flashlight. Two more months, I can have one. <laughs> I'll see you in a week. Um, according to Mac Daily News, Verizon held management training for iPhone sales last week. They had iPhones in management hands for these sessions, and apparently, this I don't believe. Apparently, but according to the source that Mac Daily News is quoting, these were LTE capable iPhones. Believe or not? Well, if, if you know, it's uh, don't be don't be so skeptical because every other time there's been a story about how a carrier has gotten training on selling the iPhone, <laughs> it's always been right on the money. <laughs> okay, as long as we're living in dreamland, let's continue. It, it, it might be true. Uh, there's there's more indications that a, 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 a non AT and T iPhone is coming. So I'm more attentive than I was, but I'm still in the camp where when I actually get contacted by an actual person who actually works for Apple or actually works for one of these characters uh, carriers and actually shows me one, then I'll totally believe it. <laughs> Continuing on in our in our fantasy series, a formal announcement coming right after Christmas. Um, apparently, uh, at ts final demand was that you, you don't tell anyone till the, you know, after Christmas, Verizon phone will be ama available immediately upon formal announcement. So what, what they're saying is bye-bye, Don, here he comes. I'm He's back, coming back. Back. back in a second. I guess you just turn it off every time you freeze. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye on myself. So. Uh, apparently, they're going to, like, December 26th, you'll be able to buy a Verizon iPhone. According to this, the device has been, quote, 100% cooked for quite a while and is already shipping in bulk to Verizon warehouses. This is great stuff. I don't I don't believe a word of it, but it's great. The Verizon iPhone is not being shipped to any third-party retailers in an effort to control leaks. Verizon agrees to take 100% responsibility for security. That would be the case, of course, if Apple's doing this. Yeah. Uh, the new i this is the thing I I'm I'm wondering about this this idea of LTE, but but Verizon did say we're going to roll out a LTE before the end of the year in, a, in like 38 markets something like that I mean the big deal, um, multi-band backward compatibility regular CDMA, 
Steve Jobs is said to be upset. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I don't even, I just want to continue that's on. A, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's right, you know what, you had a really good rumor going there, son, but you kept, you kept, you said, no, let's spray paint it gold, no, let's, add, let's put some fake diamonds on it, you know what, no, uh, you know, we're almost there, now let's sign it Renoir, and then <laughs> Steve Jobs is said to be upset the carriers cannot seem to get their LTE act together more quickly, so, according to this rumor, Apple is helping U.S. carriers to build it out more quickly. Now, <clears throat> Mac Daily News notes the above information is from a sole source that we believe to be credible, but should be treated as rumor since we cannot independently confirm the information. I think if there were phones going to Verizon warehouses, we'd hear about it now, oh. by now. Especially shipping. In, I mean, it says it's shipping in bulk, doesn't it? It sounds as though, you know, there's wagons of them tearing up. And, uh, just, <laughs> and, this, and, is, and this, is, this is usually the time when it becomes... Uh, just logistically impossible to keep the lid on a secret like this. And this is around the time you start seeing a really good hard rumor that's being reported by the Wall Street Journal or right, the New York right. Times or a, like a good international paper where you're 40% sure that someone at Apple said, this is a rumor is going to get out. Let's be the ones who leak the rumor just so that it's not a rumor about how much this phone sucks. It's a rumor about how awesome this phone is going to be. Just to pile on, Consumer Reports surveys its readers. They do a, uh, these. I think these surveys are quite credible because they get a lot of results, and uh, they do it for cars. They, they did it this year for cell providers. The number one provider in the U.S. a very a small regional carrier called U.S. Cellular. They're in twenty six states. Fifty eight thousand Consumer Reports subscribers are responding to this survey. That to me, fifty eight thousand gives it a lot of credibility. Uh, number two, Verizon. Number three, I'm sorry, number two, Sprint. Number three, Verizon. Well, I, um, it depends what you're looking at. If you're looking at customer service, Sprint beats Verizon. Anybody, probably. Uh, actually, Sprint's usually had terrible customer service, haven't they? Maybe they're getting better. T-Mobile. Second to last, rated lower than both Verizon and Sprint in overall satisfaction. And then finally, <laughs> who's left? At the very bottom of the pit, the lowest circle of hell, AT&T. Of the AT&T customers surveyed, over half owned iPhone survey results found iPhone users less satisfied than owners of other smartphones with their carrier. Our survey, according to Consumer Reports, really doesn't like the iPhone and really doesn't like AT&T. <laughs> Our survey suggests that an iPhone from Verizon Wireless, which is rumored, could indeed be good news for iPhone fans. Many users tweeting reaction to the survey results on Twitter wrote, surprise, surprise. AT&T says, quote, uh, We take this seriously and we continually look for new ways to improve customer service. <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay, so AT and T sucks. What's the news? <laughs> What's the news there? Let's a couple yeah. more stories, and we're going to get to our picks of the week. Um, I said I had a Mac story. I've been saving this. We've had so <laughs> little Mac news ever since the air. We did say how good the air was. That's a Mac hmm. story. And Apple, according to uh, Apple Insider, is going to use Sandy Bridge. Future MacBooks set to arrive next year will rely on Intel's forthcoming Sandy Bridge processor. That means NVIDIA's graphics processors will not, could not be included in at least some models, 13 inches and under, according to a new report. CNET's actually got this story, uh, citing anonymous sources. Screen sizes of 13 inches and under will switch to Sandy Bridge, which is a built, which is an Intel chip with built-in graphics. Actually, supposedly good graphics, I don't know. But I guess this would be a way of lowering the cost and the lowering the power consumption and making a smaller device. I, I think that's credible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really interesting next year to see what they do with the standard MacBook and the, you know, the MacBook Pro now that they've launched the Air. Because they made such huge inroads into performance and portability with the Air that uh, it really makes you, you know, think what they could actually do if they uh, put some of these high-performance chips in a, a you know, top-end laptop it also has the solid state drive because the, presumably the prices will drop down. I, I, the, it's going to be strange now in that I think the traditional drives will come as a built to order option. And I think the standard drives will be the SSD drives. Yeah. I think that I, I would agree with you on that. 
The mm-hmm. air, the air is such a, um, not a surprise, but such a success that I have to say it's got to influence the line. And uh, SSDs is clearly what makes the difference in speed, right? I'd be, I'd be kind of surprised if the, if they if they made the SSD a standard as opposed to an, a build order option. What if they did? What if they did a small? This is what I. This is kind of what I would do. A uh, small, like thirty-two gig boot drive with the OS on it, SSD, and then a larger spinning drive as a data drive, or even just uh, use a hybrid drive. Oh, are there hybrids like that? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 Seagate I think makes uh, at least one drive like that, where it's part of it is solid state, part of it is mechanical, and it's always and the 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 controller is intelligently figuring out that okay, these files are being used all Brilliant. the time, so we're gonna, just going to move them on to Brilliant. Right? Because um, SSD makes such a difference in performance. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's 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 definitely it's all things being equal, it's, it's what you want to get. But uh, at, like I said when it first came out, it's such a it's such a premium in price to spend. And I'm not sure I'm not sure if I'd rather have speed or an extra two or three hundred gigabytes worth of storage. Right. Of the same amount of price. Well, you got the choice, and I think that's where the why the air is so successful. It's showing that there are yep. for some people a very lightweight, very fast <laughs> uh, computer with small amount of storage, admittedly. Mm-hmm. Uh, is is the right choice. And I think as we move to the cloud, I think that's one lesson we were talking before the show began about uh, Google's uh, Chrome OS and the and the CR48 laptop that they've been giving to some press people, um, and which neither Andy nor I are overwhelmed by. Um, but, it, but it does show that there are some people who will, will uh, accept uh, reduced capability for reduced complexity, security, and are content within the in cloud storage. Yeah, the, the, for for me, the iPad really demonstrates that. I mean, it's yes. it's a, such it's such a wonderful extension of my my home machine and my MacBook, simply by virtue of the fact that I don't have to sync it, I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is connect to Dropbox, and I've got everything that I that I that I wanted to leave the house with. And now the North Point Band will play the iPad as we prepare for our picks of the week. Eat your heart out, Keith Richards. <laughs> Eric Clapton, you're not God anymore. Look, he's got a little bell ringing thing. That's pretty cool. So this is a, the North Point Band. They're an iPad-only band. I wish we had a list of the apps they're using on this. I think there's a, there's a blog post floating around somewhere. That oh, that's specific. Good. I don't want to know where he got the hat, though. That's okay. I, <laughs> I love it. No, the, 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 the screen is an iPhone. Oh, he's playing a, yep. the, the guitar is an iPhone. Yep. I think this is a, a testament to a couple of things. First of all, that multi-touch yeah. really is critical. I mean, all of these are multi-touch apps, and that the sound quality is pretty damn good yeah. on these devices. See that they, they really made that that jump where you can you can use iPads and iPhones as musical devices because they work as musical devices, not the same way that some bands use. Oh, we're playing this calculator as an instrument right. to blow right. your mind about technology. No, it's because we have we have an iPad. We want a bell ring, <laughs> keyboard, and these way to do it. This 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 ain't no Casio. Yeah, that's just amazing. I, you know, I wonder if people go around now caroling with their uh, iPads. Be shot. Wouldn't that be cool? You know, you know the, the, the iPad also was part of the Amazing Race finale on sa- on Sunday night. Really? How so? Uh, there, there are no spo- no spoilers involved, but it's the the every final episode of every season of the Amazing Race ends with one of the final challenges is that each race each of the three teams has to essentially reconstruct and rebuild their memories of the entire race so far, and so they built a game oh. show set with Bob Eubanks in Los Angeles. <laughs> And and essentially, the, the that's devices worth they use to, to essentially build like this this route, re- reconstruct this route. Like it's like a game show set. Everyone had an iPad that they had to sort of tap things around to figure. Out, okay, no, the guy with the hat was from Belgium. The guy with the hat with the bells on it, he was from Nottinghamshire. <laughs> hey, uh, the, the chat room is demanding that I do a story, which I have ignored, and I guess I will mention it. Just you know, 
because I listen to the chat room, just like the 92nd Street Y. We uh, love our users. We love our listeners. They say, uh, what, what about the fact that Apple took the, uh, the uh, jailbreak detection API out of uh, iOS 4.0? Uh, uh, what, what about that? Uh, interesting. Uh, I, so I, let me just uh, recap. That in iOS 4.0, they put an API that allowed you to detect whether a phone was jailbroken. And a, a, a third-party app could detect whether it was running on a right. jailbroken phone or not. Right. Not sure why or what mm -hmm. for, but uh, Apple didn't use it. It's not like they uh, wrote an app that said, we're going to brick you. Um, I, think, I, I think part of it might have been because there really is a huge, co there, there is really is a huge market or marketplace for pirated apps. So maybe it was there so that if, an, if a guy wanted, if a developer wanted to uh, see, am I running on a, if I'm running on a jailbroken phone, don't even, don't even mess with it. That's what it is. And, yeah. That's exactly and, what it was for. I couldn't, I couldn't really turn up anybody who was using it or thought it was a good or a bad idea. Again, this, this, is another one, this is another one of those topics where I found myself not knowing very much about it and had to ask around. And essentially, the answer to the question, why did they remove it, was, seemed to be that I couldn't find anybody who was in any way interested or excited about it. And the, <laughs> the, 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 purpose of this, the purpose of this API is to make an app not work right. anymore. So, so there you go. Our picks of the week coming up. And thank you, chat room, for that fine suggestion. Our picks we of the week. Chat room. We love you, chat room. <laughs> uh, our picks of the week coming up in just a bit. Don McAllister is here from Screencasts Online. He's working very hard for the holiday season, cranking out screencasts just for you. Certainly am. Certainly am. Anything Come exciting on, coming up? You want to plug? Um. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got the um, the Mac Mania, Mac World. We've got a couple of sessions at Mac World. I'm excited um, about that. You're going to be at Mac World, so we're going to cover Mac World. I know, Andy, you're going to be there too. Mm -hmm. yes. Th third week, fourth week in January. It's in January again this year, right? Yeah, it was the end of January, January, isn't it? Yeah. Last week of January. Yeah. We will be doing Mac Break Weekly from Mac World on like a Thursday, though, because it, it, it's not Tuesday. So, Don, Andy, I hope you will be part of that. Excellent. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to. Definitely. And uh, so come out. We'll be with the, uh, with the uh, I think Alex Lindsay has a, a whole Pixel Core stage somewhere at Mac World. So we'll be on that stage. Um. And then the Mac Mania is too late, I think, to maybe not go to insightcruises.com and see if you can get on Mac Mania 11. Mm -hmm. well, I noticed that Waz has just joined. So Waz uh, is joining us, I know. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's cool. I bought about he's eight. His he's, put, he's putting snow tires on the Segway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure. I hope he goes on the Antarctica Antarctic trip. That's going to be really fun. So we're going, uh, we're leaving Buenos Aires. We're sailing around Cape Horn. This is why my wife's not on it. I said, oh, honey, it's going to be really great. She said, Cape Horn? I said, yeah, you know, only 50,000 ships have gone down over the last uh, century. <laughs> it's not that dangerous. She said, I'll see you on the other side. So she's going to meet us at Puerto Montt and finish the trip after Cape Horn. Um, but it sounds like, oh, an amazing cruise. I don't, I don't know if there's still availability, but visit Inside Cruises. And soon, watch soon, because the 2012, is it okay, for, do you, Don, do you think for me to mention this? Uh, yeah, I think there's... Um it's already, I think it's on the site. Is it on the site? They're going to do a, a European yeah. river cruise. I'm so mm -hmm. excited. But this one's going to be very limited because it's a small little river boat. I've, I've already started sucking up to Neil. <laughs> <laughs> about this, this one my wife wants to go on, too. Neil, I heard you might be buying a new house. Or you need any help moving your furniture. <laughs> I'll, I'll do anything you ask, Neil. Uh, InsightCruises.com, the 2012 Mac Mania. This is, he's never done this before. We'll be a, a, a river cruise uh, through Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be an amazing trip. And I don't know who's going to speak on that because obviously. No, it's not been published, has it? No, yet? Neil's taking bribes now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got three people right here. <laughs> We're dying to go on that one. Yeah, there it is. It's, uh, no, that's Vancouver. I'm sorry. Mac Mania 12, it says Vancouver to San Diego. What's oh, the so river they're, trip? They're, that, that's, that's the one after that. Mac Mania so 14. 12, 12, right? Oh, oh, this 12. is this is this is in 2012. We have lots of time to save up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, two Christmases in which we can give him presents to demonstrate yeah, how much. Lots we're more time to to bribe. So that's going to be April 1st through 8th, 2012. 
Anyway, enough of that. That's not even. <laughs> uh, I'm just dreaming. Has nothing to do with you, listeners. It happens to do with. Yeah, I'll, it's I'll all about us. Listeners. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it'll, be, it'll be a lovely time. Whoever's speaking, we're just hoping you <laughs> get to see us speak. He did some amazing cruises. You see how? You see, I have the power. I can. I can. Isn't he a great guy? He does some amazing lovely cruises. man. Lovely, so lovely. active with the community, <laughs> <laughs> the kids, and the people. Uh, coming up, our picks of the week. But right now, I would love to tell you about our good friends at Hover.com. Hover is domain management made simple. I was actually at the airport uh, moving domains over to Hover.com. That's how easy it was. I was doing it on my iPad. Lots of times you go to these sites and they barrage you with page after page of offers. You don't even know what you're buying or <laughs> what you're clicking. All you want is a domain. I just want to register a domain. That's, well, if, it's, if you need something straightforward, simple, affordable hover.com in fact go to macbreak.hover.com because you'll save on your domain registration uh domain transfers absolutely free they do charge ten dollars but that ex extends the domain name for a year past the expiration date so that's worth i mean i do that they also uh, offer who is privacy for free so there's no upsell there this just comes with the deal MacBreak.hover.com, great customer support, too, and service. They have a no-hold policy for customer service calls during business hours. When you call, not only do you get a live person, they won't put you on hold. They will solve your problem if you have one. Domain registration and service, very easy. Just a few clicks and you're done. MacBreak.hover.com. I think we've moved everything over. I think it's one or two sites that I'm still having trouble prying away from the last registrar that will be moved over there in the next couple of days. If you mention MacBreak, by the way, you'll get 10% off. So there's an additional deal. MacBreak.hover.com. Thank you, Mac uh, Hover.com, for supporting MacBreak Weekly. Now time for our picks of the week. Let's start with Mr. Don McAllister from Screencasts Online. Okay. Well, am I frozen again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. You, you spent so much of the show looking like, like like part of a Devo album cover. <laughs> <laughs> are we not men? We are Donnie. Are we not men? Don's restarting. Is yeah, I shall, actually, while, while I'm waiting to reappear, um, but by the way, uh, thanks to all the Mac Break uh, Weekly with listeners who joined up to Screencast Online last time I was on, I did a special coupon code. Um, so I'll, I'll do that again this time around as well. So if anyone wants to join for 50% off, just uh, type in MacBreak Weekly when they sign up and they'll get that 50% discount. So, Good, ah, deal. Good deal. Good right. deal. Yeah, they do offer, Don does offer a free screencast online. So it's good to go visit and see what he does because I tell you, it's mm -hmm. a great way to learn how to use uh, uh, Mac software. And uh, do you do iOS stuff too as well? Uh, iPad yes, stuff? yeah, I do some iOS. Stuff. In fact, I've got a couple of iOS things on uh, this week's show as well. So yeah, um, got the iPad, got the uh, the iPhone all working, smashing with uh, with screen capture, so that's good. Fantastic. Screencastsonline.com. Mention Mac break and you get 50% uh, off. That's worth Sweet. absolutely worth it. A good holiday gift to you. Thank you. Right, my pick. Um, it's a very simple iPhone pick, this one. And um, it's... Thing called on Q. It's on Q uh, O N C U E at one point two, and what it does, it's very clever. It's very simple, but it's very clever because I don't know. You start, I mean, I listen to a lot of songs in uh, shuffle mode, and what happens when you listen to a song in shuffle mode is you listen to a song, it's great. The next song comes along, and you're not really that. You know, it's not a particularly good song that you want, so you go to the next song, and that's not a good song. So you go to the next song. So instead of listening to a stream of music, you're sort of fast forwarding songs all the way through and listening to a little bit, and it, it gets a bit of a pain. This application, what it does is it uh, takes your iTunes library on, or your iPod library on your iPhone, and basically while a song is playing, it shows you the next one. It's actually not that's that. Not one. That's not that. Okay, no, not it's, the wrong it's a, one. Yeah, it's on, the OnQ player. There that's it is. The one. Yeah. No, that's not the one either. Okay. <laughs> OnQ 1.2, I think it's, uh, if you search for OnQ 1.2. All right. So O-N-C-U-E. Uh, O-N-C-U-E 1.2, yeah. Well, so this is going to, I'm glad I did that because this is going to happen to everybody who's uh, looking. Yeah. For it. By the way, the worst search in the world. It's not very good, is it? But, it never uh, finds nothing. I'll, I'll dig out a link. But uh, what, what happens though, while, while you're playing your song, you actually get another uh, image at the bottom of your screen that shows you the next song in the queue. And then what you can do then is you can actually, while the song that you like is playing, you can skip through all the next songs to find out the next one that you like and, and put that in the queue. So it's, you don't have to stop and listen to the songs. You can actually see 
uh, the next songs in your shuffle queue and then uh, do them that way. Uh, another thing that I like to do is if I'm listening to a shuffle and then a song comes on I like and say, oh, I recognise that song and I want to listen more songs of that artist or I want to listen to that album. Currently, you have to stop the song and come out and go back. Uh, you just tap the song and it comes up with either the artist or the album. You can go straight to the artist or album while you're listening to the song mm. and then you can just pick from those albums then go back to your random shuffle queue. So it's a really, really neat way to manage your playlists. You can put custom playlists in there as well, but it's the shuffle I like. You know, I like to listen to things on shuffle, but I like to selectively shuffle and uh, enable you to do that. That's the one. Finally, thanks to Mark hey. Booth who found me the link. I don't know how Mark found it. I couldn't find it. On Q one two point two by Poor Hadi, P O U R H A D I. Yeah, great, great application. In fact, uh, yeah, I know Dan as well. I met him at MacWorld a couple of years ago, and it's uh, I think it's his first um, iPhone app as well. It's very, very, very well done. Cool, Mr. Andy Anatko, your pick of the week. Uh, my pick is a six pack of software. Yes, it's another one of those software bundles that you hear so much about on stage screen and late night television. Uh, this is uh, just all software from indie developers. It's called the Indie Mac Gift Pack. I just got an email about it from a close personal friend, Daniel Childhood, today. Uh, you can, if you hit Indie Mac Gift Pack, I N D I E Mac Gift Pack, P A C K, uh, it's six apps. Grand total value if you were to buy these separately, 272, and all six of them are available for 60 bucks. Usually, when I look at a package like this, I'm looking for are there at least a hundred dollars worth of software that I love? And yep, definitely, absolutely. Uh, my the highlights of this pack for me, you, you get, I'm sorry, you get. Delicious Library 2, which is the current version, which is a library, uh, like a, your, your analog media library organizer. Acorn 2, which is a really good replacement for Photoshop if you can't afford Photoshop or you want something simpler. Mars at a 3, which is what 95% of the world uses uh, to blog with. Uh, Radio Shift from Rogue Amoeba, Sous Chef, which is uh, Sous Chef, uh, which is a re recipe organizer, organizer and cooking app, and Sound Studio 4. For me, Four of them are highlights. Acorn too, because love if you Acorn. can't, yeah. if you can't somehow can't afford five hundred bucks for Photoshop, this will give you the eighty percent of the features that most people actually use, including layers, including all kinds of really cool stuff. Mars at a three. If you are the sort of person who needs to that blogs on a regular basis, it's not just a casual thing. Like if you you're a working blogger, uh, it's the best offline blog. That's what I use. That, I love that it. I've ever used. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, that's I, Daniel's. I, that's Daniel's app, and it's a great app. That's that's yeah. Daniel's app. That's forty dollar value. That's get, come down. To 10 bucks radio shift you will not you, you will start listening to a lot more online streaming radio and download a lot more online streaming radio once you get radio shift going because it is like tivo for streaming radio uh, there are all kinds of shows in the bbc uh, every time you hear me recommend a show uh, like a, a, a radio drama that's available on the bbc i'm not there at 2 a.m remembering to tune into the bbc website and listen to it i've looked for it on radio shift radio shift says oh yes it charges you know, the new dramatization of dirk gently so this is detective agency yep i can record that for you automatically and save it to mp3 files and make sure it's in your itunes library the next year oh sure i can do that that's what i'm made for uh, and sound studio Stu two which is sound studio four which is a lot like acorn in that uh you a lot of, you might ask the question well why do i need a app for recording and editing audio i've got garageband yeah but garageband is is like a huge 14,000 pound gorilla and throws its weight around and fills up your garage and makes stinky things in your backyard sometimes you just want to record 10 minutes edit it down to 4 minutes uh, and combine things with multiple tracks it's a lot easier it's a lot faster and requires a lot fewer resources so all in all i think we've got multiple former picks of the week here uh for 60 bucks if it were if you were just interested in mars edit yeah maybe you shouldn't be spending extra 20 bucks for apps you don't need but there will be at least three i think that everybody can use and then when you get the extra so you already be you'll already be saving money on the apps you actually wanted and then you'll actually find yourself as i did when i buy previous uh app packs you find yourself say, saying oh ah, damn it I, I i need to i really need to find a recipe to do this that and the other oh well don't i already have an app called sous chef okay we'll see how that works and then it becomes one of your favorite apps ever uh, so uh, so I, I recommend the individual components of the indie mac gift pack i checked and these the additions that you're getting in the pack are the current additions uh, so I can recommend this. Good Boy, stuff. this Good is stuff. this is the creme de la creme, really, of uh, of independent Mac software development. I I I have of these programs, uh, all but a couple. <laughs> I mean, and they're yeah, and, and I paid full and, price. I love them. And, and and let's be honest, like every time there's one of these like 
application packs there's always like the star it's 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 there's there's the three superstars and then there's the here's an app for right. doing postcards and you can choose between four fonts and you can print it in color on a color printer right. it's like oh and you thought you were going to get 25 bucks for this i can see why you've put this in as part of an app bundle now but yeah each but each one of these six this is these are like the these are the all-stars these are the iron chefs of independent uh, mac software and so as you, they you, point you, out in their yeah. faq that the, the sound St studio 4 is 80 dollars if you just bought it for 60 dollars you get the other ones yeah. you know you get 20 dollars off and the other five free so right. Acorn really is, is fifty it. bucks. So yeah. There were a lot of really yeah. great values. It really, here. it really is. Uh, boy, that's it's very fantastic. unusual to see such high quality apps in a bundle. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. Top tier. Yeah. Top tier. Apps, yeah. Thank you for that tip, Andy. Uh, I'm probably just going to buy it just because I like these guys. <laughs> just <laughs> right. to support them, you know. <laughs> uh, I've mentioned before a program called ImageWell, which is a very simple kind of, um, you know, almost feels like a desk accessory. Remember desk accessories uh, for the Mac? A very simple image editor that I use. Uh, I think anybody who does uh, blog posts and is spending a time doing um, uh, image you know, manipulation, like putting a, a drop shadow in or a frame in for a blog post, will we'll really like image well. It is, uh, uh, 3.0 is the current version, but the it's only $20. But the reason I, uh, I bring it up, and there is a trial version, is uh, that image well 4 is, uh, is in beta right now, and you can get that for free if you want to try image well. In fact, they say that if you want, if you support them in the beta process, uh, you might even win a f or win the right or earn the right to get a, a free uh, copy when it comes out. If you have ImageWell 3, ImageWell 4, we'll use that serial number. As always, ImageWell upgrades are free. Uh, but this is a great little program for uh, editing images for your blog post. And now myimagewell.com is the new forum site. That's where you can get the beta. You'd have to sign up uh, to, to get the beta, but highly recommended. Well, well worth it. They've really done a, a, a great job. It's a, a very useful program. It does require Snow Leopard. Uh, because they use a lot of Snow Leopard features in uh, ImageWell. So that's my pick of the week. Don McAllister is at Screencasts Online. Don, we thank you so much for being here this week. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for putting up with my occasional freezing on the uh, the video stream. But well, uh, we got there at the end. You always sound good, and that's all I really oh, care about. That's, yeah, that's you always great. sound great. Good, uh, good. We'll look forward to seeing you in uh, in January at MacWorld. Yeah, a couple of weeks. Yeah, of looking forward. Yeah, it's not it's not far off, is it? <laughs> <laughs> thinking of those. Start working on those slides. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, uh, Andy Anako, thank you for joining us. Andy's at the Chicago Sun Times, and also the Celestial Waste. Well, that's not you. That's my uh, that's my farm. Although. It's doing quite well. I, no, there's Andy right there. And, uh, and I pushed the wrong button. We've, we've always respected the fact that you're a man of the land. Yes. I keep my hands deep within the soil. You don't, you don't have those soft, you know, wussy <laughs> oh, no. boy hands. Oh, no. You have I, the rough fingertips of someone who's been spending a lot of time doing this. I've been pointing and quest. clicking since 1985. Oh, my. It looks like it's time to harvest the grapes. And how'd that fake food get put on your virtual <laughs> table? Did you ever ask that? If you if you want virtual wine, you got to pick the grapes in time. Andy, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank Always you all for thing. watching. Uh, don't forget now. Uh, let's see. We got a couple of things to mention. We've got a holiday uh, show coming up the week after Christmas. We're going to take a little time off, and I think we're still uh, asking you to submit your suggestions to twit.tv slash best of if there's a memory from the year 2010 that you'd like to hear again best of twit.tv slash best of do stay tuned this afternoon for those of you who are Paul and Storm fans or Jonathan Colton fans or John Hodgman I'm a Mac he's a PC though even though he's a PC he uses a Mac we love John uh, will join us this afternoon, 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern Time at live.twit.tv to record our holiday show, which will be released um, in time for the holidays, <laughs> which means in the next week or so. Uh, so that's uh, right after TNT this afternoon at live.twit.tv. Thank you for being here. Now get back to work. Great time. Over. <laughs>